Good morning. This is Mir. Mir is our next star in the How to Groom Your Sphinx series. Mir is Ash's baby sister. Now she's not so much of a baby anymore. She's now a year old and we've had her for obviously several months since she was about four months old. Now you were all admiring how wonderful Ash was for his grooming, how sweet and gentle and well-behaved, well-mannered, and he was all of those things. This little mouse is none of those things. We call her the starfish because literally all the legs come out and the scimitars come out and she struggles to be put on her back. She even struggles in arms to be cuddled. As you can see, she's, like I said, she's a year old and she still grapples a little bit. So we do the swaddling. This is the easiest way to do it. You grab the little bugger, ha, bite the chest, you have your blanket, you tuck your blanket, you scoop, make sure you don't catch the tail, and then you have your little burrito with the kitty cat. And there's a couple of methods that I'm gonna show you. Now, I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna start this process. All right, baby girl. So she's obligingly giving me one foot to while really trying to get the other one out. Now, the ears are usually the first thing that I do. Thanks to some very kind assistance from other people who saw the first video, they pointed out that cats and dogs both have a similar anatomy in their ears. So thank you for that. I do appreciate learning new things. I will post a photograph of what they look like. Now this, this is not uncommon. You take a Q-tip. I don't use any chemicals. I know people do. Um, if you absolutely need it or feel more comfortable with it, I suppose, go for it. But I just use a Q-tip. This is pretty gross. Don't be freaked out by it. It's nothing unusual. This one's going down. Take a new Q-tip. When I was talking about going into the ear canal carefully, this is what I was after. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a tunnel. You take the Q-tip. Yes, I know, my darling. I know, itchy. And you just go in gently and you swirl and you will get copious amounts of stuff out the first couple of times. This is a once a week thing, but this is really the first time I'm doing this with intent to get all the way down to the bottom of that dog leg. As you can see, that's a vast improvement. I'm not gonna go any further than that. I'm comfortable with leaving that little tiny bit, whatever's left in that ear, done. Next ear, come on my baby. I know, Toots, I know. One other ear to do, come on. Oh, monkey. All right, when I was saying that, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of, of holding them in the swaddle. What I do is I take a corner and I wrap it around and I secure that behind the body. I usually use my arm to tuck it. What happens then is, well, nothing. The paws cannot come out. So here we go. Next ear. Hi, baby. Oh, I know. I know. Look it. See, that's not actually bad. This is a week, as I said. This isn't event that they are very very used to doesn't mean that they enjoy it but hey kids don't like baths either do they well some do all right so here we go that's her foot hi hi yeah my baby see that one's really gross and as i said this is the first time i'm actively going after that tunnel of goop after this it's not going to be anywhere near as bad just set the Q-tip right there and just kind of move it down into the tunnel. Hi, baby. And gently swirl. Swirl. There you go. Oh, yes, I know, Bumpkin. I know. Okay. Now, they have lots of folds and grooves, and 
It's really easy to do this if you do it in the daylight with the sun backlighting their ears. You can see where you've got to go back in and do a little bit of detailing. But you know what? If you miss it one week, you'll catch it the next. Not the biggest deal in the world. There. All oh, the ears are done. There they are. Okay, hi, Tail. Hi. All right. Now, we're going to do those little paws. Come on, starfish. All right. One foot out at a time. Another thing I've discovered with Mir is her feet do not... Well, her toes, anyways, do not look the same as Ash, Ash's toes. She's much tighter. Um, when I poke her nails out, as I showed you in the first video, you just kind of press and the nail pops out. Hers are very short. They're almost tethered. And so they are a little bit trickier. And I have found that my best friend is a Q-tip. So I'll take that Q-tip and I'll go into this fold of skin. I don't know if you can see that, but as you can see, I'm twirling and I'm getting stuff off of here. It's oils and yes, it's a little bit of probably dirt from their litter pan. I use gravel, the clumping litter. I found it's worked the best for these guys. They didn't like a few of the other ones that I had. That's Ash. She's having a chat trying to uh, tell us that it's playtime. She has been she's, unfortunately well behaved. She's being very well behaved. You can see the evil simmering though. <laughs> Normally she would be tussling me a little bit more, but I pulled her out of the uh, the tower of, of heat. And so she's she's very relaxed. Anyways, all of this is now done on the one foot. So I'm gonna put the Q-tip away. Sorry about the crossing of the arms, but this is what it is. So now, again, we take just a nail clipper. If you have something specific for cats, absolutely go ahead and use that. I just find that this works really, really well. So again, just take the tiny tip. If you have them backlit, you can see through. And there's the quick that you do not want to catch. So I just take a tiny tip off. That's it. That's all. Go to the next one. If it needs to be done, I'll do it. If not, I will leave it alone and I'll just use the nail file. This one is a little long, so I'm going to snip off just the tip. Sometimes the nails do tend to peel. That's not uncommon. As you can see, there's a tiny, tiny piece on my finger. It's just a, they do peel as they, as they grow. This one is pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Now this little one, her thumbnail, again, because her feet and toes are almost tethered, her thumbnail is really hard to get at for me. But that was all right, so that's good. I have learned to do one foot at a time with Mir, so we do everything. We do the cleaning of the area around the bed, we do the cutting. Just use an emery board. That's all I use. Just a nice. It's not a. It's not a heavy grit. It's almost a fine grit. I need to medium. This is. Um. It is kind of a medium. This is a finer side. I use this one. It's. It's pretty good. Nothing too heavy because then you're going to start grinding off the nail, and causing um. Frayed pieces to show up. Not something you really want. So this is it. And again, I just smooth it down. I have two cats. They do tend to play fight. I really don't need the nails being an issue. Uh, somebody asked if they can climb. Oh yeah, they can still climb. There is no problem with climbing their trees, their towers. Um, in fact, I've I've taken a couple of pictures of Ash. There you go. I saw. All right, my baby. I've taken a couple of pictures of Ash climbing it, and uh, anybody from uh, old school. TV days. Remember King Kong climbing up the side of the uh, Empire State Building? Yeah, he, he kind of yowls at the same time. There's no planes flashing around, but he doesn't let that stop him. All right, that is one foot done. Good girl. So now... Do a back foot and then we'll... Yeah, we can do the back foot. So now I tuck that one back in and tuck 
See, little Purita. Hi, where'd you go? Peekaboo. All right, we've got two legs out. And since she seems to be comfortable, see her both feet are sitting there quite happy on her belly. No problemo. Ugh. I know my baby. All right, back to checking the inside of the toes in under the skin. See, Dad, can you get in there? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make the retraction happen. Boop. And you can see that there is some soil, dirt, whatever, all around this area. And if I use the Q-tip, it really doesn't come off very well. You can use a wet cloth if you don't want to use a baby wipe. I use baby wipes because I have a ton of them now. But I have gone so far as to just use a wet um, cloth, flannel, terry, whatever, whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy the, the fanciest stuff. Just use what you've got around. As long as you can do the job, that's all you need to worry about. So now all of that stuff is gone again. And these nails are in dire need of some cleaning. So why don't I do that first? Again, this is your choice. I'm going to do this first because if I don't, I know, baby, I know. Oopsies. No, 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 no. Tuck. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Any foot. There. All right. If I were to try and cut, I wouldn't be able to see the quick with the amount of uh, oils and dirt that are on her toes. So in this instance, you have to adapt. Clean up the toe and then do the cutting after that. All of this stuff, I know, I know. All of this stuff is oils and dirt. I use my thumbnail and I wrap it on a double layer of the, of the wipe. Not a single because that's too sharp and believe me, we get more whining if that happens. And then I just gently go after. It's kind of like if you're putting your own cuticles back. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. You gotta push those cuticles back so that your nails show their best. And that's basically what I'm doing is going along the edge, not pushing back a cuticle. Don't get confused. I'm not pushing back anything. All I'm doing is stripping this stuff off. And now, as you can see, I can see those nails much, much better. See? Tips are white. And those are the bits that I want to get off. So we just go there's a good baby Mia. Dip. And oh, this one's there, all better. And one more. Barely anything is coming off of these toenails. And again, I just use the file, file it down. <laughs> I know, my baby. I know you're such a good girl. You are such a good girl. Ash will be proud of you. Or he'd laugh at you. Okay. And that is how you do a front and a back paw. And in order to get to the next one, well, it's just a simple matter of tuck. And pull out the one that you didn't do. And wrap. Just fold them in. She's like a little, little burrito. She's not getting anywhere. Um, some cats I've heard tussle and fight a lot and so you might actually have to do a little bit more in terms of protecting yourself. There's been times when Ash has been an absolute doorknob and he's tried to tell me that he doesn't want to be done and so what I've had to do is take the blanket and cover my arm a little bit. He doesn't actually bite. What he does more is just Put his teeth on my arm to say, hey, enough, man, enough. Mir's never done that, but it's so much easier to protect yourself rather than deal with an ouch. And a stressed cat. All right. We're just going to speed this up now and clean up because she's been incredibly patient. Go in, tidy all that. This doesn't take long. And there. 
That's good. See, not bad at all. You may not have a problem with your cats with this piece. Ash does not have this deep inset um, bit. But if your cat does, this is a really good tool. Don't use anything sharp. Use gentle force. And look at that little tarantulas. Hi, baby. All right. Mama's going to finish off. Thank you for watching. And uh, I appreciate all the feedback that I've gotten from my first video. I look forward to hearing from you in this one. And uh, if, uh, if the cats cooperate, maybe we can do more videos of other things like, you know, King Kong on the, on the tower. Say goodbye, Mir. <laughs>